What is the correct order to fight all the bosses in Scarlet and Violet? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet being a true open world adventure without level scaling has actually led the games to be quite fun and challenging. Without knowing the right order, you may accidentally do Gym 7 before Gym 2. You might accidentally take on the hardest Team Star boss before taking on the weakest one. And you might end up fighting a crazy strong Titan Pokemon when you weren't ready for it yourself. On the other hand, sometimes getting these harder boss fights out of the way earlier than intended might make the games easier for you, and they might provide with a sense of accomplishment that you otherwise wouldn't get from the game. But for all the vanilla Pokemon players out there, I'm sure you may be wondering, what is the correct order to fight all of the bosses in Scarlet and Violet? While there is no correct order as such, there is an order of easiest to hardest in terms of levels, which is what most people would consider the quote unquote correct order. We're going to be going through these orders for each of the story paths and then looking to see what would be the most sensible way to tackle all three story paths together. For the Victory Road story path, or in other words, the Gym Challenge, the ranking of difficulty in terms of the Ace Pokemon is as follows. Katie the Bug Tag Specialist is the easiest with her having an Ace at level 15. Brassies the Grass Type Artist comes in second with an Ace at level 17. Iono the Electrifying Streamer jumps in third with an Ace at level 24. Kofu the Water Type Specialist likes to swim in the middle with an Ace at 30. And Larry being the average normal type user that he is, is also in the middle with an Ace at level 36. Rhyme will spook you with her level 42 Ace, but Tulip Psychic Pokemon have already told her that you'd be more weary of her since her Ace is level 45. And finally, Grusha the Ice Type Specialist comes in as the final gym leader with a chilling level of level 48. But that's nothing in comparison to the levels of the other two story paths. The Path of Legends, or the Titan Pokemon battles, might be the easiest story path in the game. But the levels do vary a bit. It starts off quite easy. The Rocky type Stony Cliff Titan is at level 16 but I'd say you need a few more levels to make this fight a bit easier for you. The flying type Open Sky Titan comes in at level 19, so not a big jump at all. But then you jump to the Steel type Lurking Steel Titan, and it jumps to level 28, so be wary of that. But what's even crazier is the next jump over. The ground type Quaking Earth Titans are version exclusive to one another, but both come in at level 44. That's a whopping 16 levels higher from the previous Titan. And the final titan, while not as bad as the previous jump, does come in 11 levels higher. The false dragon titan comes in at level 55, making it so that the levels here are indeed higher than the highest gym leader in Paldeo. The final path that we need to go over today is Starfall Street, or in other words, the path where you take down Team Star one by one. And this, in my opinion, is the hardest path by far. Not only do the levels start off higher and end off with the craziest, but this path basically requires you to fight a gym battle and a titan pokemon in the same fight. So trust me when I say that Team Star is no joke. Team Star's weakest user is the dark type boss Giacomo, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who comes in at level 21. Yeah, see? Already much crazier. Then you move on to Mela, the fire type boss that we've seen in the trailer, and she's at level 27. Six levels higher, not bad. Atticus the Poison type boss is also generous enough to come in at level 33, another 6 levels higher. Are you starting to see a pattern? Well don't, because Ortega, Team Star's fairy type boss, has the audacity to waltz in here at freaking level 51. Level 51. That's literally 18 levels higher. For what purpose? And the strongest boss between all 18 bosses here, we have Aerie the fighting type boss of Team Star at level 56. And boy, is that a tough fight if you're not prepared. So those are the correct orders for all the different story paths in Scarlet and Violet. But if you were to put all these paths together, how would it look? And level-wise, what would be the most sensible way to go about these paths? Well, first, you would want to start with Katie, and then make your way down with Arvind to fight the Rock Titan together. You then go back to show Nimona that you're still committed to taking on the Gym Challenge by taking on Brassius and then you bounce right back to Arvin and the Flying Titan to ensure Arvin the same. Cassiopeia gets a wait, but now you can take on Giacomo and proceed with Operation Starfall. After this stunning victory, you can try to get famous with Iono and her streams and take her down in the process, and then show Mila all your new clout and beat her in her squad as well. We've been ignoring Arvin for a bit, so let's go back and help him take down the Steel Titan and cool off by taking out Kofu right afterwards. To make it even between Arvin and Cassiopeia, we can go ahead and take down Atticus' base next, but since we're weary of his formal pattern of speech, we need something more normal and we take out Larry for our next badge. And then we go out to party with Rhyme right afterwards, 
just to see the stark contrast between the trainers. We then go out with Arvin to take out the Ground Titan and get our first instance of these cool new Pokemon, and then we decide to make Nimona the happiest by taking a Tulip first and then Grusha right afterwards, making it so that we now have all 8 Gym Badges. Ortega comes next, and while we're almost done with Team Star, we take down the final Titan, the False Dragon Titan, to complete this section of the paths in the order that we started them in. And to complete the trio, we finally take down the last of Team Star, and the last one of the 18 bosses. Airy of Team Star, making it so that we just beat every boss in chronological order of their levels. Now though you beat all 18 bosses, there are still a few more things you need to do in order to really beat these story quests. Specifically for the gym challenge, that means being the lead 4 and the champion, which you already know. But for the other two, we don't want to get too into them because they're more spoiler heavy. But if you were to ask me, I personally think story wise, it makes sense to wrap up Team Star first and then take down the champion and then finish up with Arvin's story. I would say taking down the lead 4 before the Team Star stuff also makes sense of the story. But Arvin's stuff coming up last, I think personally feels the most right. And hey, no spoilers here, but you can't really get to the end of his story till you beat the other two's paths anyways, so you might as well. That's playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet the way Pokemon intended you to, but the thing is, there really is no right way to play these games. So go out there and have fun. Experiment, do something crazy. The open world and freedom that this game offers you is the best part about it, so try and make use of it. But of course, if you want to play a more vanilla-like playthrough, that's totally fine as well. And with this guide, you'll be able to do so. If you want to check out some other videos that I have, then be sure to see all the versions of exclusive Pokemon in these games. Or maybe a video on all the Terra Hats in these games. I'm sure there's something for you on this channel. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next video, alright? Later, bye!